Hey everybody, it's Derek Colmartin from CodeOpinion.com. Do you need to integrate with external systems? Most people think of a venture of an architecture as a way to decouple between your own services. However, it's an excellent way to integrate with external systems or services. I'm gonna illustrate this by being driven by events, you can create your own webhook system to integrate and call external services or systems. This allows you to decouple and make your system more resilient. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So first, let's actually describe the problem here. So we have an application where we make a request to it from our client, and let's say it's placing an order. So our application at this point makes a request to our database, makes some type of state change, inserts records, doing whatever it needs to do. But we also need to integrate with another system. So this could be some HTTP API that we need to make a call to. Now the problem here is that after we've made our state change, we then need to make that call. But the issue here is that that call is happening within the same request lifetime, the same process as the call from the client. So this is gonna be blocking the client from getting the result. So we make that call to our HTTP API. Now on a happy path, it's fairly quick, there's no issue. But what happens if that third party is down, it's unavailable, or it's taking a really long time and we get a timeout. And that issue there with that timeout is that's gonna take that much longer in latency to return back to our client. But if it's unavailable, we've made our state change, but we haven't let that third party know about that order actually occurring. So what we really wanna do here is we wanna decouple and separate our placing our order and making our state change from actual in the integration portion with our third parties. So we can separate these concerns of placing our order in integrations with third parties using publish subscribe and our events. So what that looks like is when our client makes a request to our application, which is the producer, it's actually gonna make our state change, but instead of calling the actual integrations, it's simply gonna place a message to a topic to our message broker. And then from there, it can just simply return back to the client saying, okay, you placed your order, everything worked. But from our integration point of view, our consumers can pick up that event and deal with it from that topic. So we could have zero consumers, we can have many different consumers, and we can have many different integrations. So I mentioned webhooks, and ultimately what they become is a consumer for events, and it basically adds an extensibility point so you can integrate with. So what that looks like with webhooks is our application, it had its request, it's gonna place a, basically a message, that event to our message broker, and then asynchronously, completely separately, in a different thread, a different process from the actual request initially, our consumer, that webhook service, can then pick up that message, consume that message, and then make the appropriate call to whatever third-party system or API. To demo this, I'm gonna show the eShop on Container sample application, because it has a built-in webhook system driven by events. So I'll walk through the sample application and show code on how it is actually built and how it works. I will also show how there's actually one kind of issue with how it's built that I think could be approved upon. So the way that eShop on Containers is built is there's various services. So there's a basket service, a catalog service, identity, ordering, payments, and webhooks, which is what we're gonna look at here. So this webhooks project is completely independent. It's its own separate console application. If we look at dependencies here, um, in terms of .NET projects, it referenced some event, event bus, some other stuff, but it has no dependencies on the other actual services. It's completely independent. So if you look at its startup, it has its own um, ASP.NET Core project, a part of it. And the interesting thing here is what it does is it, as I mentioned with events, it's also a consumer. So it could, it's listening to RabbitMQ, which is the message broker, and it's consuming certain events. One of the events it's consuming is the order status change to paid integration event. So when these types of events happen, there's other ones that it deals with, it basically consumes those events. And then what it's doing, if we look at some of the code here, it basically is getting out all the webhook subscriptions. So all the different third-party integrations that have defined they wanna to subscribe to this particular event. And it's gonna make an HTTP call to those services that have subscribed. So I'm just gonna look at send all here. We can see that it creates a client factory. It serializes the webhook data that we're gonna to send to JSON. 
and then makes that actual call. So this is how it's built completely separately, just as I illustrated, is that it's an independent application that's just a consumer for events. And when those events occur and it consumes them and handles them, it's making that HTTP call to our external service. So what I'm looking at now is a separate application that's supposed to illustrate that, what that third-party system is that is basically gonna receive those webhook uh, calls to us. So lower down here is current webhooks received when orders paid. That's what the actual webhook we, I have configured here. And I'll have to refresh the page so that we'll see it when it actually occurs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to the actual web application and I'm gonna place an order. So once our order gets placed, it gets validated, it gets paid, once that paid event occurs, we're gonna have our separate webhooks application that we just looked at. It's gonna send an HTTP request to this uh, third party, what we're mimicking a third party service here, our integration. So let's run through that and actually do that. I'm gonna add something to my shopping cart. I'm gonna check out. Let's go through the checkout process here place our order. So our order status has been updated to submitted. Our, our order ID 42. So this is 42 right here, we're at submitted. So now we're awaiting validation. Now we're stock confirmed. All right, so now we have our update status to paid. So now if I jump back over to our integration page here, if I refresh, now we actually see the call that was made to us. So here's our order 42 with the stock items. That was all the webhook data that it sent to us. So there's one thing I mentioned that could be approved upon in this webhook system. So again, our webhook system is completely independent, which is awesome. It's consuming that event when the uh, order status to changes to paid. But the thing is, is that with all our different webhooks, we're sending them all out at the same time when we consume that message within the same process. Meaning that if you had 10 different webhooks that we're subscribing that we need to send an HTTP call to, they're all happening together within the same process. And that's happening here in this send all. We take all the different uh, receivers, we call the on send data, which is basically just returning a task, we make that HTTP call. Now the problem here is what happens if one of the HTTP calls takes a really long time? That's gonna make the latency of everything slow. What happens if we can't connect to one of the receiver's webhooks for this HTTP call? That affects the other ones. So rather what we wanna do, just like we were separating the concerns of placing our order and doing the integration via an events, we can do the exact same thing here by fanning out and having each individual subscription be its own message that we're consuming that we're executing independently. So the way this looks right now, is we have our application publishing the order status change to paid event to RabbitMQ, our broker. And then we have that webhook service consuming that event. And when it does so, it figures out who all the receivers are that want to subscribe to that webhook. And then we make the HP uh, call to all of them. What we'd rather do is still have that same event uh, order status uh, change to paid and have our webhook service consume that event but what it's gonna do is just look at what the subscriptions are. Look at who actually wants that webhook. And for each one of those subscriptions, push a message back to our broker to a queue to have that work done independently. So we're gonna push three messages to a queue back to our broker, and then we're gonna independently consume each one of those messages. And inside that message tells us who it's actually going to. So the first message we could say, okay, it's just specifically for this integration, then we can consume a second message and then send it to another integration and then our third one to another one. Now you can have more concurrency here to process these messages concurrently. Check out my video on the competing consumers pattern on how you can scale this out horizontally to do more work. But again, besides that, it's really the point is to have each one of these um, actions done independently in isolation. If you need to integrate with external systems, being event-driven can really facilitate this. It allows you to decouple this concern entirely by just being driven by events. Consume events and then call that external system however you need to for that integration. It allows you to be decoupled so you're not concerned, you're not intertwining the rest of this logic about this integration with your normal application code. It's completely independent. And you add resiliency here because you're using events to decouple. All this is done asynchronously. And as I mentioned, by breaking things down into smaller tasks, each individual task 
allows different flexibility in terms of how you want to deal with retries and failures. And because they're done in isolation, they don't affect other actions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.